Okay. Welcome everyone to the Cook Memorial Library. This is the fourth um, face-to-face Zoom conversation with neighbors this winter of 2023. And we're very happy tonight to have um, Katie Thompson, co-chair of the Tamworth History Center, and the other co-chair is Betsy Lochran, who I believe is here. Katie's been involved with the History Center or the Historical Society um, in its iteration since 2004. She's lived in Tamworth. Ooh, since was that wrong? <laughs> I, think, I think it was like 11 or 12. <laughs> well, anyway, it's been a while. And she's been lived in Tamworth since 1970. And before that, spent every one of her summers here. And her fascination with Tamworth history began at the age of 13 when Marjorie Gaines Harkness published the Tamworth narrative, which um, Katie devoured and uh, enjoyed as a teenager. So we're going to be recording this program. I think I may have said that already. And we're hoping that you might save your questions until Katie gets through her slides. And then there'll be time for questions and conversation at that time. So I'm going to stop talking now and uh, let Katie take over. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, so... Tamworth residents down the years have had a lot of love and appreciation for those stories and images and artifacts that we've inherited. And the history, Historical Society slash History Center has helped to bring these into focus for all of us. Um, so here are some stories and images of the buildings, the discoveries, the programs, and especially the many people this organization has been all about over the last 70 years and how they've all passed on this legacy from generation to generation. Let's start with the very oldest item in our collection. We won't go to it quite yet. It is also one of our most recent uh, donations. Late last fall, Peg DeLong asked if we would be interested in something her son Evan had found in the Swift River behind the townhouse back in 1985 when he was eight years old. Today, Evan is an executive uh, chef at a country club in Houston, Texas, a job he's held for 18 years. He told his mom he'd be glad to pass on his find to the History Center. So we can go to the next slide. Oh, there we go. So this tool could be as young as 300 years old or as old as 11,000 years old. And as you read, uh, which is when the native people first migrated here from the West and before that from Asia, it would have had a wooden handle and apparently have been used uh, to dig charred wood out of a felled tree uh, and burned, yeah, burned, felled and then burned, perhaps, to, or maybe felled by burning, I don't know, perhaps to hollow it out to make a canoe. Uh, and we were, we knew these were around, the Native people had a, a, a stone tool factory, so to speak, up in the north side of the Ossipi Mountains. And a number of people have some amazing artifacts from that period. Uh, and we're happy to have this one. So one of our mottos suggested by past board member, Barbara Nordine is history happens every day. So there are a lot of days to think about if we go back 11,000 years, but luckily we don't have to think about them all at once. So next slide. Tamworth Historical Society was founded in the fall of 1952. The charter members who felt strongly about the idea of Tamworth history were Francis and Harry Damon, Bertha Eastwick, Olive Falcons, Elizabeth Helm, Helen Hidden, Mabel Hidden, Dorothy Moody, and Wadsworth or Waddy Remick. And four of them are shown here. I, unfortunately, we don't have pictures of all of them. Their first unofficial meeting took place on November 19th at the Cook Memorial Library in Tamworth Village. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Helen Hidden brought in an early photo of Tamworth Village and a painting of Butler's Bridge by Martin L. Shank, 
Bertha brought in an old photo album, probably from the Robinson family. I believe uh, um, Ron Ramick explained to me that Bertha was a Robinson, probably related to Bruce in some way before she was a um, Eastwick. And Waddy contributed a an 1892 program of the Centennial Ceremony at Ordination Rock. In February 1953, Wadi Remick was elected president and Olive Falcons was elected secretary. Her meticulous minutes, handwritten in green ink on lined paper, are an incredible resource. Um, we do need to digitize them or do something. They're just amazing. The group, uh, by now, included folks like Jim Welch, Nellie Fortier, Madeline Whiting, and Grace Panic. It was agreed at that meeting to join the New Hampshire Historical Society. Dues were $3 per year to send a letter to box holders in town introducing the new Tamworth Historical Society. The group voted to ask for membership dues of 50 cents per person and $1 per family. Next. Here are the Damons. Uh, uh, you can read the Harry's on the left and his wife, Frances, in the middle, and their son, Steve, who many of us knew on the right a, a generation later. Um, it was his extraordinary photographs, uh, collections, and albums, which some of us are aware in the Ulitz from the Cook Library, which provided a lot of these uh, wonderful images and facts. Um, for the society's first home, the Damons offered the wing of the Willow Inn, the old building where the town office now stands, for the sum of one dollar per year. The directors had identified a prime goal as, quote, preserving all articles of historical value for exhibit in our museum. The space was small, so meetings would still be held at the library and at members' homes. By February, a brief column about uh, the Historical Society's progress was appearing monthly in all three local papers, the Carroll County Independent, the Reporter Press in North Conway, and the Laconia Evening Citizen. Twelve people attended the March meeting. Bob Eastwick was elected treasurer. It was decided that annual meetings would be head in, held in July, and a sign for the building would be designed, built, and painted by Madeline Whiting, her brother Bob Eastwick, and Steve Damon. In April, Charlie Remick, Ron's father, was elected vice president, and the group enjoyed looking over old town books loaned for the evening by town clerk Forrest Ayer, who lived in the little house where Sally Flagg lives now, including the original 1766 town charter. Next. The old Willow Inn. Uh, you can, can everybody see the the uh yeah you can i don't need to read that i think that's for you to read uh on your own while i proceed confusingly um by may the little collection of donated memorabilia had grown to 19 items including a pair of skates a bed warmer maps papers and joseph gilsman's Gilman's post office desk from the 1860s, where he ran the post office and what we still know as the Gilman house in the village. In June at the Damon's house, there was a speaker, Leroy, Leroy Whiting of, San, of, of a Sandwich, spoke about the Sandwich Historical Society, which had been founded in 1917 and recommended annual picnics in July. Mabel Evans, Lil McGrew, and Dr. Herbert Prince all brought in interesting old items to add to the museum. The new sign had been hung. Hmm, can we see that? I hope so. To the right of the tree in the right-hand photo, yes, good. Um, suspended from the old fireplace crane from Parson Samuel Hidden's house, which was located where Deb Malley and Charlie Townsend's is now, the original that house had burned in 1917. The welding for the sign was done by Henry Robinson, Bruce's father. Next. An early endeavor the society devoted much energy to was to preserve Arthur C. Page's old blacksmith shop on Turkey Street, the last remaining example of its kind. At some point, unfortunately, this project came to an end, and I haven't researched yet when or why, some people may know. 
Um, but more recently, some of us remember that it served as a second hand shop uh, run by David Hayford, another Tamworth history buff. Enthusiasm for the new organization ran high. John Hidden remembers his grandfather, Harold Hidden, teasing his wife, Mabel, and their neighbor, Olive Falcons, on meeting nights. Olive would stop by to pick up Mabel, and Harold would say, off you ladies go to the Hysterical Society. Next. 33 people attended the November 1953 meeting where Francis Damon spoke about old glass. In January 1954, following a talk by Olive Falcons on the Shelburne Museum in Vermont, Lil McGrew agreed to chair a committee to research old houses in Tamworth. Talks that spring included Dr. Prince speaking about the old Cogswell house, now his grandson, Ted Morgan and Mary Lou Hatchers, and Helen Hidden spoke on the old William Hidden house, now the Hemingways. 33 people attended the July 1954 annual meeting, which included a tour of the new museum. 22 people had donated over 200 articles of interest. Membership stood at 52. And I'll try to read, I meant to print it out, but um, here's an example of Olive's lovely handwritten minutes that she's changed from green to blue ink or black. Um, but she talks about, um, we have 52 members or about because some are family memberships and are comparatively, I can't read it without moving at something, something existence. At this time, do I dare move? Wait a minute. Yes, I can do this. I can move this out of the way. Um, comparatively short existence. At this time, we feel much encouraged in our progress and look forward to a bright future. We have a great deal of work to do as we were uh, as we study and compile information on old roads, cellar holes, histories of old houses, cemeteries, genealogies, and all phases of the history of town in all sections, and we shall appreciate the findings of each of our members. Respectfully submitted. Okay. Next. It's time to look at a few collection items, even though these are, came in much later and are not the ones that uh, were there early on. But it's kind of fun to think about the toy factory over at the South Tamworth Industries and the, uh, the toys that they made. And then George and Laura Hubbard found these funny old signs under the old uh, coffin shop that used to be over by their house uh, at the foot of Chinook Trail. Next. From the start, the History Center's founders had hoped for a history of Tamworth, and soon Marjorie Gade Harkness got started on the project. With Lillian McGrew and a few others, she began interviewing all the old timers in town. This invaluable collection of interviews can be found in a black binder in both of our libraries. Um, the Tamworth Narrative was published in the fall of 1958, History Center took orders and by August 1959 had sold 362 copies at 475 each with a profit of 50%, 50 cents per book for the History Center. It's been pointed out but that by current standards of historical writing, the narrative could be a little more accurate and perhaps a little less, well, let's just leave that part aside. Anyway, it's written with love and verve and it has sparked an interest in history for a lot of people besides me. Next one. In 1961, the History Center took two important steps. It was incorporated and also the group moved to purchase the old Grange Hall on what is now Greg's Way, where it would stay located until 2008. This building, uh, not so long ago, was moved, uh, turned to face south and rehabbed by Tom Curtin and crew uh, to be a very energy efficient office building belonging, I think, now to DEFTAM. Um, during its day, previous days as a Grange, and I think afterwards, the building had hosted square dances and other community events for many years. So both the upstairs and the downstairs were, I think, just one big single room. 
uh, at least they became so, except there was a little kitchen in the downstairs too. The, um, the historical society's um, previous digs had been getting a little small in the annex of the Willow Inn and then, or a bit later, became the community nurse's office. So following lengthy renovations by dedicated volunteers, including uh, Forrest Woodard and many others, in 1966, five years later, the, the uh, Historical Society moved in, opening in time for the town's bicentennial. In its new building, the Society developed a wonderful house museum upstairs, meaning that they were, it divided up the space into sort of room sections, um, each set up to show a certain period of time or a profession, like blacksmith or whatever. No, um, I think I meant shoemaker. Maybe that was blacksmith, I'm not sure. The meeting room downstairs was fixed up with seating, possibly, I don't know, the old wooden seating from the barnstormers. And there were well-attended monthly programs on Wednesday nights uh, uh, in the spring, summer, and fall when the winter it was too cold. For some years, in the 1950s and 60s, the History Center had its own column in the Carroll County Independent. Steve Damon uh, included, anyways, here, here is something from one of the columns. And I'm going to read more of that clipping, which you can see part of because it's such fun. Um, about 50 members gathered. Miss Lillian McGrew introduced the special guest of honor, Tamworth's oldest citizen, Mr. Charles Bennett, who is 94 years old. Charlie delighted his audience by playing his violin and in answering questions put to him by Miss McGrew, Mrs. Harkness, Reverend Wickersham, and others. Some of the tunes he played on his fiddle without a note of music in front of him were Turkey in the Straw, Irish Washerwoman, Golden Slippers, Jingle Bells, Rakes a Mallow, Down in the Valley, Arkansas Traveler, home on the range and many others. The audience showed their appreciation by clapping hands and tapping feet and singing along whenever they knew the words. Charlie said his violin is 150 years old. He recalled playing for dances on a covered bridge with lanterns hung all around. Also in the kitchen of his own home, which is the Highland House where Dale Bragdon is now, old sea kid captain Dodge's sea captain house originally. Um, and also playing dance, oh, where couples danced around the central chimney. Charlie said dances in those days were usually in the fall in corn husking or apple paring times. He told how the apples would be pared and cored, then strung on a long string and hung up to dry, later to be used for pies and sauce, the surplus at dried apples being sold to the stores. He recalled playing for two dances at Harry Damon's home, also for dances in this historical society building when it was a dance hall still attached to the Kimball place where Mrs. Hartford now lives, now the Gilman house. He said people used to come by horse and wagon as far as 15 miles to dances. He said he never got much chance to dance. He was always busy fiddling. Charlie was born in 1871 on Bennett Street in Sandwich. He went to school till he was about 16, one room school, 40 to 50, pupils uh, and now lives in the Earl, uh, near the Earl Remick place, yeah, next to it. He said that in the old days, Cleveland Hill was all open fields mowed right down to the brook, but now it has grown up to forest. A man of many talents, he can read music and play the piano as well as the violin. He sharpens saws and scissors. He used to shoe horses, now makes hand sleds, wheelbarrows and ox yokes. In his youth, he was a very skilled carpenter and was with his brother, Arthur Bennett. He built the house of Mrs. Gertrude Bear, which is now Robbie Farnham's, and the old school, uh, now John and Mabel Hidden's laundromat, and now, today, Euphus. He started, uh, yeah, the, everyone sang when Charlie played Working on the Railroad and Auld Lang Syne, which brought an appropriate close to an evening of reminiscence. Okay, next. I also remember, um, and I think many of us do, in the, I think the 90s, uh, in the same location, wonderful talks given by uh, 
long time uh, by Harry Thompson, long time Whittier farmer and trapper, uh, originally from South Dakota, and by Bun Nickerson, who told a lot of funny stories with a lot of audience participation about skiing on Page Hill and all over the place. Next slide. So uh, we wouldn't be here without uh, Samuel Hidden on the left, who was the early leader of Tamworth in every way, spiritual, educational, uh, and entered, uh, he founded the, and his wife founded the social library. And he was an inspector of schools and he played the double bass and was a, a uh, song leader for the, the shape note songs that people sang in church then. Um, and I don't, I'm, I can't probably point to things uh, this, but let's, we can go through the generations. There are a couple of double ups. So there's more than 10 people here, but so the old gent, the, the second to the left photo, the old gent with the cane is uh, Samuel's son, William who was a deacon in the church and a farmer, had sheep all over Great Hill and lived for 96 years. He lived through the entire 19th century. He was born in something like 1796 and died in 1895 or something. Um, his son on the left with the little goatee was John Deering Hidden, who was an insurance salesman and sold tractors um, across the country and made a fortune and lost it. Um, his son, standing up behind the others, is uh, Samuel Alfonso Hidden. And in the next photo on the right, uh, to, next photo to the right, he's the one to the right with white hair holding the baby. He was a, uh, a selectman and a representative in um, Concord and uh, all around, uh, important citizen in town. His son, Harold, is to the left with his elbows, sitting with his elbows out. He was a house painter. He was married to Helen Hidden, who's up on the right in her own photo, uh, who was the, the cook library librarian and the piano teacher and uh, recorder of cemeteries in Tamworth and one of the founders of the History Center. Uh, they brought up Johnny Hidden, who many of us know, uh, uh, and uh, the guy standing in back is Bill Hidden, uh, Harold's son, who many of us remember as a carpenter in town, married to Christine. And then going down to the color photo, well, the baby is, I believe, Sam Hidden's older brother, uh, whose name escapes me, but he's a great contra dancer, and he's still with us out in the Northwest. Down bottom, we see our friend Sam Hidden um, and his son, Oh, okay. Yeah, here are just some things that are wonderful in our collection. Lower left are, is one of the entire collection of Samuel Hidden's handwritten sermons that we have, written on beautiful old rag paper. His writing isn't very legible, but they're absolute treasure trove. Upper right is a extraordinary button from Sam, well, the old minister's, and his family call him the old minister's coat, which we have. Um, lower right is a wonderful Victorian baby carriage someone gave us. In the middle, the beautiful rug belonged to Kate Sleep of Walden and was in, uh, in the house. Denny Sams gave it to us, and it was in the Antlers for many, many years. And upper left, we have a lot of wonderful photographs. And this shows somebody or others. I'm going to go blank on that. But, you know, logging, logging was a big thing. And you can see the Tamworth Inn in the background. I think this is a parade. Um, it was good to have logging trucks in a parade. Next. Next. So this here, my organizational skills start to deteriorate considerably because I don't have dates exactly for these three. And I wish I had a different photo of Dave Bowles, but these three, Charlie Remick on the right, um, father of Ron and um, Dave Bowles in the middle, uh, son of Juana Lancet and uh, Joan Casarado of the Remick tribe 
who moved back from Illinois in the 80s with her husband and took over, got very involved in the historical society and uh, ran the other store for some time. These three all contributed enormously to the historical society. And many of us remember them. Um, I should also mention Christine Kurtz White, who had a lot to do with helping uh, properly renovate the old townhouse. Bob Cottrell, um, who contributed a lot and so forth. Next slide. So it turned out that the history, uh, historical society folks uh, in, had a choice around 2008 between the big task of possibly renovating the old uh, center that they were in on Greg's Way, which was gonna be a lot of money, or um, Vern Dyer on the right had, had passed on. He was a big history buff and had, had sort of hoped that maybe someday his house, which you see there, could go to the Historical Society. Um, and the, the group decided that the location was so great in the middle of town, uh, even though that this building too needed an awful lot of work, that they would uh, sell the old Grange Hall and move everything over to uh, the Hall Dyer House. And I forgot to include all the business about lawyer, uh, the lawyer o Obed Hall, who probably built the house back in 19, in the eight, excuse me, 1830s. And his family, it was in his family for a hundred years. Um, then it went to his, uh, well, his, his uh, one of his daughters and his son-in-law lived there after he died and were involved with the burgeoning inns uh, on either side of them, the Remick, Enoch Remick House and the what would become the Tamworth Inn. Um, we think there was overflow housing for workers there and there. The, the history of the house kind of uh, reflects the history of, of Tamworth and New Hampshire in a nice way. After that era, it sold out of the family and for a while was a housing divided into apartments or at least rooms to for worker housing for the New England Box Company, which had its fact, it's a mill, big mill over in Madison, but which cut wood uh, in a large uh, area, which included Tamworth. And then Harry Damon, who you saw a picture of before, who was a rescuer of old houses, um, got into the picture and bought it and then sold to, to Vern Dyer, recognizing another old house lover. And to the left is our friend Charlotte, who was with us until uh, 2016, just before Christmas, who was a wonderful person um, and who uh, was our, a very enthusiastic docent that first summer. We, we finally opened in this building in 2016. Okay, next. So here are a few of the happy crew. I think you will uh, recognize most of them. Donna Whipple is labeling some collection items. Joan Casarato and Bobby Carlton, who did incredible archival work uh, for the center, are on either side of uh, Bob Cottrell, who, I mean, excuse me, Bob McLean, who kind of took over from them. And wonderful Nate Hughes on the right was our treasurer for years. And you can see the, the uh, beginning of the renovation with some insulation and stuff behind the trio. Next. Um, so yeah, we embarked on this new project of fixing up this wonderful old house. Um, and to the left, you see the frills. Down below on the left, you see Jeannie Chester doing incredible work on the, uh, oh, somehow I left out the one of Lang Ambrose and uh, uh, who repaired this doorway uh, very carefully before Jeannie 
painted it. In the upper right, Carl Baer was among many. You can see quite a list there. And the, the floor, if you're familiar with our new meeting room, the lower photo on the lower right shows the, the pattern of the floor when Jim Shea took it apart and uh, rebuilt it. Next. Um, just quickly, uh, uh, the stories, uh, the Tamworth stories that have national and international significance, uh, we think everything does, but you know, the, when people come to visit, the two very compelling sort of big stories are of course, Arthur Wald and his dog Chinook, they're started in one Lancet and their uh, training and breeding of this wonderful dog and his offspring and the spreading of the, the art of uh, sled dog racing as a recreational sport. Lower left, Bruce Bedford's photo of somebody who's zipping off on Chicago Lake. Next. And uh, the uh, Waldens uh, being chosen by Admiral Byrd to lead the sled dogs crew for the 1927-28 uh, expedition to the South Pole. And the dogs are inspecting the US Navy and so forth and so on. Next. And the other story, of, of course, is that Grover Cleveland ended up having his summer house here after he was president. He never here was here when he was president, but he was a friend, his family was friends with the Finley family and that's how they landed in Tamworth <clears throat> after their oldest daughter died, sadly, um, when they were in their, at their Buzzards Bay summer place. They felt they couldn't bear to go back there. I think she was 11, uh, so they, came to a summer house in, in Tamworth and the rest is history. <laughs> and I wish I had a picture of Marion in there. But anyway, there's a few of them. Several presidents gets a little confusing. And the next. So just jumping forward um, or to some great photos that are fun. It's really fun. We have an annual visit from the first grade, uh, prep school first grade, and uh, you can read about what they're doing and see what they're doing. And we love them when they play inside and next slide. Out. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that, there's something funny happened to the other slide, which is some neat pictures of the kids uh, outdoors. It, it's not gonna show. So we're jumping ahead to say that our current, uh, we're very excited about our current situation, which is that Gardner Norcross, the guy in the middle and his crew have started work on the second floor. And after uh, all these years, built, um, bought the building in 2008, really started uh, renovation seriously in about 2012 or 13. Here we go. Uh, to fix up the, the final uh, three, uh, several rooms upstairs, which will be able to be, uh, yeah, like I said, storage and, uh, and uh, exhibit and workspace. I left out uh, the bit about changing our name. This was uh, the kind of John Wacker's idea, along with the idea of, of renovating our lawn and making it a, uh, a meeting place or a village green for everybody to use. Um, it was also suggested that we, that society sounded sort of old fashioned and exclusive and the history center indicated a place that people would come to where there would be activity and experience and it would be inclusive. So that happened, I think in 2015. Um, and here we are with the, just in the right-hand picture. Well, we were looking, yeah, thanks. Uh, that split lath is one of the amazing features. We, we, we really try to, and will increasingly try to have the story of the building be a part of what we share with people. Um, and here you can see this amazing split lath, which is 
very old, very original and made with very wide boards, probably some 20 inch wide boards there to hold the plaster. The plaster is now gone and, and there's new framing, which Gardner's done to keep it all standing up for another hundred years or so. But um, it's just a beautiful example of that particular uh, building method. And then on the left, you see the incredible beams. We're going to have to close in the ceiling above the beams but we're going to take a lot of photos of the incredible framing up above uh, before we strengthen it with additional beams. And we might also leave a little hatch and have a ladder you could, you know, climb up and stick your head into the attic and turn on a light and, and just enjoy this really beautiful building, which really came down from, you know, the, the boat building uh, skills of our ancestors, the Norseman and down to England and over this way. So last slide. Dun, dun, dun. This was a, a float several years back. There's Amy Barrier with a baby carriage and George being Grover in Grover's canoe, which is one of our prized possessions. And young Silas, what was his last name? Not Marner. Um, he's now 23 and uh, all grown up and doesn't live in Tamworth anymore. But there he is with the old high wheeler that Johnny Hidden and his cousins found buried in the cellar of the house that's now Riverside Apartments uh, one day back in the 1950s. And um, thank you. <laughs> what happened? Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Katie. Okay. Well, there's there's plenty more, but I and and I but I went over time with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Katie. Okay. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about any of that over overage of information, <laughs> or or contributions or corrections? No, I think I'll leave. Yeah. I can only see the second slide. I can't see any of the people. I took the slides down, so. Um, oh dear. All right. Well. There. We'll see if anyone has any questions. I think that was really interesting, Katie. <laughs> Some of those photos I've never seen. <clears throat> so, are you thinking for the attic? um in the um renovation that um she's one of our librarians or head librarian i guess you're hoping oh, there whoop excuse me you're hoping to um to have it so you can still get up and see it if someone wanted to see the framing of the building yeah <clears throat> it's a thought that might be really cool i think we could do it we're sorry. I mean, it, it is really beautiful. If anybody wants to come visit, do because it's uh, they, Gardner's done a beautiful job opening it up. We'll keep pieces of it that are sort of framed, like the, um, the wall that you saw there, just, you know, um, so we won't totally finish the whole thing so people can really see what's beneath, what's behind the walls. Yeah, some of that split lath, we have a, a framed in glass section downstairs and we'll have some more upstairs fun so there is a question in the chat and i'll ask it it's peggy asking did charlie thompson come to tamworth because of the 10th mountain division and ned bear oh you mean harry thompson um i think yes he, harry harry yeah my father was Charlie. um i don't know hmm. His wife, Sid, was from uh, certainly somewhere in the East, somewhere in New England. And I, I, somebody, I mean, that answer is findable, but I, it's a good, it's an interesting question I've heard before. And I don't know the answer. We should find out. I think we can. Yep. <laughs> was um, Harry one of the people that were, was he part of the, the oral history interviews? Yes, I think so. Well, but you know, um, Richard and Marion Posner yeah. interviewed him at great length. 
And Chris Conrad also spent a lot of time with them learning about trapping and animals. Um, and he was not in, he wasn't in town until the early 50s. Um, and so he was not in the Marjorie Gain Harkness series of interviews. He was just a young newcomer at that point, I think. But with Silas Purse was in the um, Purse. The thank photo. you. Yeah. Yeah. E E A R C E. Yeah. yeah. Just saw his dad the other day. What year was that, Katie? That picture yeah, of the float. Of the float. I, I neglected to pin that down. I would say around um, 2015 or 14. Mm -hmm. It was because we had we weren't open yet at the Hall Dyer House. That happened in 16 for the bicentennial. I mean, for the 250th. Um, and so it was we had a little exhibit at the library and we were sort of trying to drum up some interest and support at that point. Oh, look at all these nice people. Good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. This is fun to see some distant people and family and the nearby ones too. <laughs> so we have a comment that this was so lively and fun. So well, good. Yeah. Glad you liked it. It's a it's a nice evening to be snowed in, or at least <laughs> sleeted in, or something. And so I hope everybody. I hope it doesn't get too messy, and people don't have too much unpleasant shoveling in the morning. Well, and that we keep our electricity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's also important. <laughs> okay. So I have a, it's always amazing to think of all the work and various people and meetings and all to make something like the History Center develop. That's, uh, I think that was Peggy. Peggy's yeah. And I, am, I just discovered, or I, I just found and started to, refound and started to actually read the, the early minutes. And I wish I'd started, of course, a month ago. Uh, and now I'm all, they go from, you know, 52 to 69 or 70 or something, maybe into the 70s. And then, of course, they go forward from that. But this particular box contained the old ones with all these handwritten uh, notes and little photo things and lists of the people. And it's moving to me because I knew so many of those older people when I was a kid. Um, uh, and exactly that, that just that the amount of work uh, that went into it and detail and caring and <laughs> organizing and <laughs> cleaning and tidying and building and everything else is, is really, really mm -hmm. something. And I think that that's the, the inspiration, a lot of the inspiration or the momentum for, for me comes, you know, from just kind of wanting to be able to honor them by, uh, keeping things tidy and, and passing them on and sharing them. Hey, it's a legacy, really. Legacy is the word, yeah. So, well, maybe it's bedtime. I think so. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. coming. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Sleep well, everybody. Yes. <laughs> bye -bye. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting some thanks in the chat. Yeah. I'd love to see who 